second time, it, it seemed like the compulsion to do it was too strong, and I, I didn't even try to stop it after that. So no, race had nothing to do with it. It was just their looks. After... about picking up a, a hitchhiker and uh, taking him back to the house and uh, having complete control and dominance over him. One hot summer morning in June 1978, 18-year-old Stephen Hicks left his home in Northwest Ohio, planning to meet up with friends and attend a concert at Chippewa Lake State Park. While hitchhiking, a young man roughly the same age as Stephen pulled alongside him and invited him to have some beers back at his house. That young man was Jeffrey Dahmer, and Stephen Hicks was to become his first victim. After Dahmer's arrest in 1991, he confessed to murdering Stephen by choking him with a the barbell, then dissecting his body, dissolving it in acid, and eventually crushing the bones with a sledgehammer before burying them for the second time in his yard. Dahmer also told investigators that he was stopped by a police officer while driving with the body of Stephen Hicks in trash bags in the back seat of his car. Dahmer was on his way to the dump when he crossed the double white line, causing a nearby patrolman to suspect a drunk driver. Jeffrey explained that his parents had recently divorced and he couldn't sleep, so he decided to take the trash to the dump. The officer, seeing the trash bags in the back seat, accepted Dahmer's explanation and let him go. This would be the first of many close calls with law enforcement. It is my opinion that Dahmer learned a valuable lesson during this encounter that would serve him well in subsequent run-ins with police. He remained cool, calm, and collected, which is why I believe the officer let him go. Initially, Richard and Martha Hicks weren't worried when Stephen didn't return home that evening. Stephen was known to stay out late, and his mom and dad believed he'd simply forgotten to call. However, as the days passed with no word from Stephen and calls to hospitals turned up no information, the Hicks grew increasingly concerned. After six days and no answers, they phoned the sheriff's office and filed a missing persons report. The Summit County Sheriff's Department detective assigned to the case conducted a routine missing persons investigation. He questioned Stephen's family and friends. He also retraced the 30-mile route to Chippewa Lake. The detective checked with surrounding counties to see if a body had been found. All to no avail. Several more months went by with no new clues or leads. The case was classified as active but dormant. Carol Hewitt Varner, a detective later assigned to Stephen's case, said, quote, it was like he had just disappeared. It was just a big mystery in this office. What happened to Stephen Hicks? End quote. On July 23rd, 1991, Richard and Martha Hicks finally learned what happened to Stephen. It turned out that Jeffrey Dahmer, the man in all the recent news stories, had murdered him. Stephen Mark Hicks had been Dahmer's first victim nearly 20 years ago. Crime scene investigators had been dispatched to Dahmer's childhood home in Bath, Ohio. Investigators unearthed about 50 bone fragments and parts of three teeth. The Hicks supplied Stephen's dental records in the hopes 
it would lead to a positive identification. Stephen Mark Hicks was born June 22, 1959 to parents Richard and Martha Hicks in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. In 1978, he was a recent graduate of Coventry High School. His friends and family describe Stephen as a warm, caring, kind-hearted person. They go on to say he is a compassionate person who loved to help others and was open to making new friends. In an article published in the AP News in 1991, Stephen's father, Richard, recounts a hunting trip the father and son took together. Mr. Hicks says, quote, he was as proud as he could be and then he bawled his eyes out after his son shot a rabbit. Mr. Hicks would go on to say he was proud of his son for showing such feeling. That trip was the last hunting trip. Upon learning what happened to his son, Richard said, quote, did it help? Absolutely not. He also said, if it was in my power and I could enforce the judgment on that man, it would be that he suffer the combined agony of all the families of the victim's lives and of his parents for eternity, end quote. Martha Hicks had this to say when asked if she believed in capital punishment. Quote, I don't believe that we should have to pay taxes and support these monsters and give them their rights for the rest of their lives when they took away the basic right of life, end quote. Richard and Martha Hicks would learn the horrific details of their son's final moments during Dahmer's trial in 1992. Richard Hicks had no way of knowing in August of 1991 that Dahmer would indeed learn the agony he'd inflicted on Stephen firsthand. In 1994, Christopher Scarver, who was on cleaning detail with Dahmer, picked up an empty bar that holds the free weights and bludgeoned Dahmer to death. However, that is probably of little comfort to the Hicks. Unfortunately, Stephen Mark Hicks' body has never been found. November 20th, 1987 started out as a typical Friday night for Steve Toomey. He had just resigned from his job as a server at a restaurant in Milwaukee. Steve, as he was known to friends, headed out to a bar in West Allis. Also at the bar that night was Jeffrey Dahmer. Dahmer, who experts say could be quite charming, struck up a conversation with Steve. The two men talked and shared a few drinks. Eventually, it became clear to Steve that Dahmer was interested in more than a conversation. This presented a bit of a conundrum for Dahmer as he was living with his grandmother. Jeffrey convinced Steve to come with him to the Ambassador Hotel. He agreed and Dahmer got the pair room in his name. When Steve entered that room with Dahmer, he had no idea that only one of them would leave. What followed next would remain unknown until 1991 following Dahmer's arrest and subsequent confession. Dahmer claims that his intention that night was not to murder Steve, but to drug him and spend the night with him. Stephen Walter Toomey was born on December 19, 1962 in Ontonagon, Michigan to parents Walter Toomey and Catherine Ann Vertanen Nowick. Steve also had a younger brother, Darren, who was born in 1970. People who knew Steve often describe him as lively, cheerful, a person who loved life and was always ready to help others. He was known to quickly make friends wherever he went. His classmate, Priscilla Marley Chinaworth said, quote, I was in art class with him and he made this beautiful stained glass lamp that I can still remember. It was just beautiful. I remember he could do just about anything artistic. After several attempts to locate Steve were made by his family, turned up nothing. After three months, they reported him missing. Despite leaving behind his entire wardrobe and several paychecks from his job, his father Walter said the Milwaukee police told him they couldn't help because there were no signs of foul play. In 1993, Dahmer sat down with reporter Nancy Glass. 
he discussed the murder of Steve Chumi. One time I brought this uh, young man back to the hotel room, the Ambassador Hotel. I uh, was just planning on drugging him and uh, spending the night with him. I had no intention of hurting him. When I woke up in the morning, he uh, had a broken rib here. I was heavily bruised. Apparently, I had uh, beaten him to death with my fists. I had no memory of it, but that's what started the whole spree all over again. According to police reports, Dahmer stated he, quote, couldn't believe this had happened, end quote. However incredulous at what he had done, Dahmer knew he needed to act quickly. He booked the room for an additional night, left the hotel, and purchased a suitcase. Dahmer callously stuffed Steve's body into the suitcase and walked out of the hotel. He drove to his grandmother's house. Over the course of several weeks, he set about destroying the body to hide his crime. His efforts sadly proved successful, as Steve Chumi's body was never recovered. I had uh, these obsessive uh, desires and, and uh, thoughts wanting to control them, to, uh, I don't know how to put it, uh, possess them permanently. In a strange twist of irony, Dahmer's need to forever possess his victims has been successful. Dahmer was never charged for the murder of Steve Toomey and only Dahmer knows the truth of what happened November 20th, 1987. While he has confessed to murdering Steve, it is Dahmer who controlled what details he chose to share. My hope in doing this series is to break that control and allow the victims to have a voice, to be remembered as the people they were. Stephen Hicks and Steve Toomey had dreams, goals, and families who love and miss them. They were not just Dahmer's victims. They are real people and they deserve to be remembered for who they were.